The British are coming. The British are coming. The British are coming to the CB&W Railroad Club in Grafton, Virginia. What I'm going to show today is my representative armor train uh, with British armor that was used throughout the war from 1939 through 1945. I'll start with uh, the engine. The engine is a V3 tank engine it's made by Bachmann Europe. Um, it's in OO scale, 176, but as you all know, OO can run successfully on um, H HO scale track. The flat cars uh, on this consist are all Atherin 40 foot uh, box cars. And the reason I chose those, mainly because price, I can get those between eight and $12, but looking at those compared to a World War II uh, British flat car, very similar trucks, very similar in design. So I thought it was an easy uh, modification to do. So what I ended up doing was cutting out the stakeholders, um, adding some buffers on each end, uh, covering some of the detents left by the stakeholders, uh, adding a, uh, the brake uh, wheel on each side. The markings, I did my own. I made them up, uh, printed them on my computer, and then uh, put them on each flat car. The tanks uh, are just representative of the British tanks. Uh, these two flat cars represent tanks that were used by the BEF uh, during the uh, fall of France and the evacuation of Dunkirk. Um, just for trivia, the white squares on those tanks were added by the British uh, for recognition so their own troops wouldn't hit their own tanks. So very interesting. Uh, the tanks in the desert camouflage are obviously ones that were used also in North Africa. This first tank here, I'll just go into a little detail. This was the Matilda, probably one of the better known British tanks, known as the Queen of the Battlefield. It ran roughshod over the Italians in 1940, uh, early 1941. It was known as the Queen of the Battlefield because the Italians really had no way of stopping it. It was very, very heavily armored, very good gun, 40 millimeter gun and um, was excellent. However, it had a very slow speed of only about uh, walking speed of about three miles an hour, top speed maybe six. But anyway, these tanks here are representative of the types of British armor that was used and some of the camouflage schemes that they used. Um, some exceptions, one would be uh, right here, the Grant tank here uh, was a Lend-Lease tank uh, used by the British um, very successfully. They loved it. Had the largest gun of any of the British tanks. Had a 75 millimeter on a Sponson off to the side. And yeah, that's a detriment because it's not in a turret, but in Africa with its wide open field of uh, fire, um, it wasn't as bad um, as in closed confines, let's say in Europe. Anyway, uh, many of the tanks uh, here, um, the tanks are mainly a mix of Alsacast, Roco, and 3D printed. And the vast majority of those are made by 3D Valley printing or bolt action printing um, out of England. Guys known as Sebastian, and just with any of the 3D printing companies, they'll advertise certain scales for their tanks, but if you contact them, they will scale up or down the tanks to fit for 187 scale. One thing to uh, definitely consider on those is the degree of quality of the 3D print. A lot of the 3D prints, a cheaper one, you'll see the 3D print lines and everything. But if you look at this Valentine tank, that's as good as any uh, injection molding tank you're gonna get. And uh, I have several examples of those. So don't just go for price. Uh, look at the quality of the print uh, that they're doing. But anyway, so these were the uh, North African, and then we go into um, European. And uh, a very famous uh, tank, you may or may not have heard of, Firefly. It was basically a Sherman. Uh, the British upgunned the Sherman. They put in a 17-pounder, a 90-millimeter gun, uh, modified the turret slightly. But uh, they put that in there. Um, they got about... Three to, uh, they didn't have a lot of them, but they had enough to put into every uh, uh, regiment uh, that the British deployed uh, during the Normandy invasion. Next is a crocodile, and you may have heard of that. Uh, very, uh, very good tank um, for what it was used for. All the markings on the tanks, um, except for the tactical markings on the turrets, 
um, and the American markings, but if uh, the markings here, um, here, uh, all the markings on these, I did on my computer at home, and uh, this way I could scale them to the correct size for the tank that I wanted. Um, so that worked out very well. So anyway, if you want to recreate this uh, tank uh, train, uh, it's very easy to do. And it was a lot of fun researching uh, British doctrine, why tanks were developed the way they were, the camouflage that they used, and their markings, which is uh, very, very interesting. I won't go into it, but um, needless to say, it was quite varied. And lastly, uh, the paint schemes uh, that they used. Hope you enjoyed uh, the video, and I will hopefully see you around at the CBNW Railroad.